I'm really excited to welcome you to Wound Awareness Week's Conversations With. My name is Helen Jens and I'm the CEO of Wounds Australia. With me for the conversation today is Hayley Ryan, Chair of Wounds Australia and Wound Care Clinician and Expert, Sarah Chapman, Clinical Product Specialist with our Wound Awareness Week partner, Century Medical, and one of our amazing Wound Awareness Week champions, Lynn Pryor, to talk about her experience of living with a chronic wound. Welcome, everyone. Hayley, I'm going to kick off with you. We're holding these conversations as part of Wounds Awareness Week, which is a really important campaign that Wounds Australia runs every year. Can you give us a little bit of background about Wounds Australia and why Wounds Awareness Week is so important? Absolutely. Look, thank you so much for bringing this to light because conversations is exactly what needs to happen. We need to start talking about people living with wounds and the impact to their quality of life. In fact, what we know in the statistics is that 420,000 people every year are suffering from a wound, 420,000 people. It impacts their life, it impacts their social aspects. Some people can't even go to work because of these issues. We want to start having this conversation and during Wounds Awareness Week, we want to bring this silent epidemic to light. And that's the importance of having these conversations. Now, in terms of Wounds Australia, we've been working on this for almost 30 years. You have a bunch of really passionate keen clinicians trying to work for reform, trying to work with parliament and trying to work with the people living with wounds to heal them faster. One of the things that I live by is healing um, people, not just wounds, but to do that, we have to do it together. Fantastic. Thanks, Hayley. Now, Sarah, just give us a little bit of an introduction about the work that you do with Century Medical and your background with wounds. Okay, no worries. Um, so I'm Sarah. I'm from Century Medical. We're a um, medical consumable company with a big focus on wound care. Um, I have been a registered nurse for 10 years and four years ago started with Century Medical as our clinical product specialist. A big part of my role is to support both our sales team um, and our consumers and customers in the appropriate use of our products um, and making sure that the products are getting out to um, the right the right people um, and being used in the right way so that we can get better results out of the products that we're using. Fantastic. And Lynn, I would argue the most important person in this conversation. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit, can you take us through your wound journey? Oh, well, it um, started in November 2020 and um, I was um, had, went to the medical centre and got it dressed and then I had to go back the next day again and that's when they wanted to put me in hospital um, and then the head nurse got talking and discussing and they found out that there was a new wound specialist. So they rang him and um, he said, no, she doesn't need to go to hospital or come up and see her next week. And, well, I don't like hospitals, so that was the best news I'd ever heard. And, um, yeah, and that's how it started. Yeah. How long from the point in time where you, you saw it and you thought, oh, this doesn't look too good, to when you actually went to the GPs to get them to look at it? I probably dressed it for a couple of weeks myself before I went to the GP. Yeah, and because I could see it. And it progressively got worse? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yep. And so your so in terms of you had this uh, wound on your leg, you were treating it, it was getting worse, so you headed to your GP and, as you rightfully said, you know, their, their first... Uh, response was, oh, well, you'll have to head to hospital. And and as you highlighted, not something you're really keen on doing, obviously, because of the impacts on, on you and, as we said, no one likes hospitals. So 
how quickly were you able to see the the wound care specialist? Um, well, that was the Friday, and um, then I think he was. I can't remember whether it was the Tuesday or the Wednesday of the next week that he came to my house and was just so confident that um, you know we would be able to heal it and. And, yeah, it just made me feel so much better. Excellent. Yeah. Have you had any setbacks in, in your healing journey? Um, well, it was nearly healed um, August last year and um, then it just broke out again and probably got worse than it was um, at the very start. And um, yeah, just just for no reason, it just broke out. Yeah. Hayley, why? How does that with with wounds? Why does that happen? What, what? Why do you get to a point? And and I'm sure Lynn and and her wound care specialists were really excited that it was getting almost to to a healed point, and then it comes back even worse. How does that happen? Yeah, look, there's a, there's, a, there's a heap of factors to answer that question. Is it medications? Is it other comorbidities that the person may have? Is it the fact that Lynn, like Lynn, was always on her feet, which would be impacting, um, you know, the shift in fluid that it comes with a vascular wound? There's lots of different reasons. They do get stuck sometimes in what we call um, the inflammation phase of healing, which is when we start to say we're looking at a chronic wound. But looking at the person holistic is crucial. So, you know, what other factors do you need to think about when, when you're dealing with not just the wound, but the person living with that wound? So Lynn, when when the the blister developed and and the the wound started to form and you took yourself uh, to your general practice, uh, previously you said you dressed the wound yourself, so you just used something that you had at, on hand and dressed it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I had one on my leg, just a very small one previously, and I had some of that which was like a silver dressing, and um, I used that until I could see it wasn't getting any bigger, uh, uh, any better, and um, that's when I went to the doctor's surgery, yeah. And when you went to the the surgery, um, how did you feel they were able to to help you? You, you mentioned they they suggested you, you probably needed to go to hospital, yeah. uh, which is one of the big problems uh, I think currently in our health system is that in, within a primary healthcare setting there isn't that, that knowledge uh, and expertise around wound diagnosis and developing a treatment plan. But you were really lucky because they put you onto a, a wound clinician. Yes, yep, I was so lucky. Yep. Yeah. I've been told so many times that, you know, I could, spend 12 months in hospital with an ulcer and, um, yeah, not to have to go into hospital, yeah, not to be able to be home in your own home. Mm. Wounds are not um, nice things. They're, they're not nice things to, to look at. Um, unfortunately, there is more often than not some sort of, and I, I, I use the word exudate only because I've been taught that by Haley. But you know, some some sort of um, how would you put it, Haley? You know. So you you might have some um, symptoms of heat or itchiness, redness can be a bit uncomfortable. Lynn, would these some of the things that you might describe with how you're feeling? from the actual cellulitis itself? Like how does it make you feel? Um, I don't feel too bad, but with the, um, especially more at the start, and it still does too, is the exudate or the <clears throat> the weeping. Um, and probably the day before I due to get it dressed, I can smell it too. Um, 
I don't know if other people are conscious of it, but I can't, I'm conscious of it. And sometimes that embarrasses me because I don't know who else can smell it. What about your mobility, Lynn? Is that affected by the, the cellulitis and also having a wound? Um, it probably hasn't. <clears throat> I have a, a bad knee which um, affects me for the simple reason that I cannot have a knee replacement until that wound is healed. And um, so mobility isn't good at all. Uh, is there anything else for you personally associated with having that type of wound that that you feel has a negative impact on uh, your life, how you go about doing things in your daily life? Um, well, you can't go away on holidays or anything like that. Or if you do, you only go for a few days because you've got to be back by a certain time. Um, not that I'm a big swimmer, but you wouldn't be able to go swimming or do things like that. When the, the wound first appeared, how big was it? No, it was really like a blister that um, opened, started. It would have been perhaps the size of a 20 cent piece. Okay. And, um, yeah, but just got bigger, yeah. And so as it got bigger, how how big did it actually get to, Lynn, in terms of um, on your leg? Well, um, after it re, uh, sort of came back last um, August, um, it was virtually around my whole leg, yeah. So obviously... Sarah, that then did that then require a reconsideration of of the treatment, given that a wound might start out as a twenty cent piece and now it's around the entire leg. Absolutely, I think as wounds um, either worsen or improve, you should always be considering what you're using. Um, and if you're using something a particular product for for two years and yeah. it's not. Um, improving then you definitely need to reconsider um so i would imagine that the wound clinician did the change uh, yes. as you've yeah. gone along yeah um particularly the um uh, antimicrobial um and also managing the the secondary dressing so the the extra date so if there's a if it's smaller and there's less yeah. extra date you can get away with perhaps a foam style of dressing but where um lens been um, for the last probably six months or 12 months, it's, it's really a highly exudating wound that requires a super absorbent dressing. And if um, you're not using something that's managing the exudate appropriately, as Hayley would know, it can just get significantly worse very quickly. Definitely need to, to balance that kind of moisture level. And, and Sarah, so from Sentry's perspective, how, as a, a company who are, are providing those sorts of consumables, those treatments, how do you ensure that people have an understanding of the right treatment? Is is that where the, the wound care specialist is essential here because it's their knowledge? Um, it's, it's absolutely that. We need to, as um, territory managers, most of us have nursing backgrounds and it's really um, imperative for us to connect with all of the wound care specialists in our territory um, so that as the people who are managing or overseeing a lot of these wounds, um, that they know what's available to them, what products are available to them, and that they can get their hands on the right thing. So from, from a company perspective, it's really about making sure that we reach out to all of the people, all the right um, wound specialists. And we also um, put a lot of focus on education, so running um, uh, workshops and um, creating different educational resources for uh, whether that be a clinician or, or a patient to be able to access. Hayley, on that front, the, there's such a push for, for patients and consumers to be empowered in terms of their, their treatment. But within the, you know, wound treatment, it seems like consumers have very little knowledge and, and understanding of what is the right treatment and 
what does that treatment do for me or how how important is it for me to take this medication because this will help my wound to heal and I'm not even going to get into perhaps the lifestyle factors that may influence better wound healing but how how important is it for consumers to have that knowledge it's very important. If you think about yourself, you're walking home after work, you trip over something, you graze your knee. What's the first thing we do? We usually all will go and wash it down with some water and then we'll put a Band-Aid on it. And that's what we'll continue to do, hoping that it will heal. But what we often see is that those that have other reasons that make that wound become a worse wound We don't often see anybody going and saying, okay, it's time to go and get checked. It's time to go and seek out a specialist. The knowledge gap is around seeking out expert opinion in terms of wound specialists. So you might be lucky that the patient will go down and see the GP and the GP will do some treatment. But again, how can we engage sooner with referral pathways to get those specialists involved who are dealing with this every day? There's a gap there, I would say. One of the things, but I would say too, with a wound is that Lynn has explained very well how impactful the wound is to her life. But there's also a human element here. And, and Lynn, I want to ask you about what supports do you have at home? Because when somebody's living with a wound, it's not just them who's living with it. It impacts the entire family. And I see this a lot with my patients. So, Lynn, what support structures do you have at home? Who's there to help you? Or do you not have people there to help you? Um, well, I do have a husband, but we lease a property down the southeast, and um, which is a sheep property, and um, he's been away since May because the ewes have been lambing, and he needs to be down there um, to, you know, keep an eye on them and and to watch them. So, um, my family are very good. Um, my grandsons, I said, they take out my wheelie bins and stuff like that. My son um, cuts wood, my sons and cuts wood and brings into the um, home or into the house here for me. And um, otherwise, yeah, that's just the family help. My, um, my daughter's very good. They'll come and help me do anything that um, I need doing. So I do have plenty of family support and how often then are you having to have it dressed now at the moment Lynn um twice a week so is that there is improvement it is improving uh yes it is very slowly but it is improving yeah and how does that make you feel when you you see the improvement um very good yeah very happy um no it does if the nurses and the wound specialist is happy with it, I'm happy with it. Um, you know, you don't mind how much longer it's going to take as if you can see an improvement, just that little improvement every da- every yeah, time it gets dressed means a lot. I'm all right now because I'm in the hands of the, the professionals. And, and that's really, I think, that's really an important part of your entire story, Lynn. And, and I, I know it's awful that you, you've been living with this wound and you're going through this, but Hayley, Lynn's one of the lucky ones, isn't she, that she did get access so quickly to, to a, a clinician who had that specialist knowledge because not a lot of people get that, do they? No, they don't. Um, And quite often we will see exactly where Lynn was heading, which was over to hospital. We will often see admissions to hospital for wound care when it could actually be treated within the person's own home. Um, Again, you know, late referrals can actually mean that we will have delays in wound healing or we can actually see some um, other effects from not managing the wounds quick enough. So I think Lynn was very lucky. And I guess my question is to Lynn, what was the best thing about um, the, the health care you received from the wound specialist? Oh, it's just fantastic. 
I could not complain about one nurse or the wound specialist and I am just feel so confident, yeah, and it just makes me so happy and that's why I'm doing this now because if I can help some people, you know, I'm not a um, public speaker or anything, but if I can help and get the word out there um, and up, help other people, um, that's all because I'm just so thankful that everybody's helped me. Lena, I have a, another question for you. If you could provide some words of wisdom to those living with a wound, what would you tell somebody in that circumstances, something you've learnt along the way? Well, I know I would go and the very first time I saw something on my leg, I would be going and getting, um, go to the doctor and getting support from um, the wound specialist or ever or whatever. Um, yeah, don't leave it. Don't treat it yourself. Get professional help. One of the things that we really want to drive through Wound Awareness Week is a campaign around um, bringing the knowledge to people so that they can act quickly. I've mentioned um, several times about acting promptly, referring early, and that's what Wound Awareness Week is really going to focus on, how we can bring this silent epidemic to light. Well, I think on that note, Hayley, I think Lynn probably has encapsulated that the solution is bleeding obvious, isn't it? And Absolutely. That's why Wounds Awareness Week and amazing wound champions like Lynn are so important and why companies like Century Medical supporting our incredible clinicians and patients is so important in really addressing this hidden epidemic. 